Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Bikers in prison. Black versus white. Being set up. I didn't seen it all. Let's relive it. Before we get started, let me say thank you to everybody that jumped into live. You know, the live this weekend. That was crazy. If I missed your question, didn't get your question, please bear with me, man. It was like watching the Matrix on my end. The comments were coming so fast. The donations, thank everybody that donated. It was coming so fast, man, that I was kind of, I wasn't expecting all that. That was the first time it's gotten that big. It blew me away, man. And I want to thank each and every last one of y'all because this is not just me. Jay Williams, that's of life. It's all of us. I couldn't do this without you guys. Each and every one of you guys. We're already I almost at 54K since Saturday. It's just, it continues to grow. And I guess real recognizes real. And salute to all my real ones, man. And as y'all see, before we get started, y'all see that Raiders in the house. You know, I support states. If I like a hat, I wear it. So shout out, much love to LA. So let's get into it, man. Today I got a story for y'all. I got a banger for y'all. I'm going to give y'all the backdrop on the guys in the story. First guy in the story is a guy by the name of Terry. Terry's an ex-biker. I'm not going to put Terry's organization out there. Just Terry wasn't big on letting people know who he used to ride with. I know who his, his motorcycle club was. I know who he used to ride with. I met Terry. Terry came in the pod, and Terry was your, your typical biker, except he didn't have the long hair. They make you shave your hair here in Virginia. Not no more, but they used to make you shave your head as soon as you come in, so that we all, it's kind of a way of stripping your identity away from you. And it cuts back on lice, things like that. But the main purpose is to strip your identity and make you all look the same, all in the same uniform. Everybody does the same thing every day. Everybody's got the same haircut. They were big on that. Terry had been in prison, from my understanding, for quite a while. Terry was at a gathering with some of his brothers from the motorcycle club one night. Said there was a whole bunch of people there. He said they were inside the building. They heard motorcycles outside, which was nothing out the common. You know, they thought it was just some more of the brothers showing up. He goes outside to smoke. And it's actually another biker gang that they got issues with. One of the dudes from his MC, his motorcycle club, had ran into some problems with some other dudes. And these dudes came to this, you know, this biker party to resolve their issue, which was stupid. Terry said he steps outside to smoke a cigarette. And he looks around. He sees a bunch of unfamiliar faces, unfamiliar bikes, unfamiliar patches, and realizes these dudes are from another motorcycle club, right? He said, so he walks over and asks him, there's something I can help you with by now. A couple of his brothers have come out the out the building from the party. Everybody's inside drinking. Girls are in there. They're playing pool. Just basic motorcycle party. You know what I mean? This is a clubhouse. He said, and there's, you know, all these different bikes lined up. These dudes are pulling up, lined up in front of each other, ready to wreck. And Terry goes out there and they ask for his brother. You know what I mean? His brother, not blood brother, but his brother that's part of the motorcycle club and Terry asked him, what's this about? Why are y'all here? Y'all here unannounced. Y'all can't be here. Y'all got to leave. He said, another dude starts to get mouthy. So he punches that dude in his face. He said, the dude was still sitting on his bike. So he punches that dude in his face. Dude falls off the bike. He walks around the bike, starts fucking him up. Next thing he knows, he hears shots. Bow, 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 bow. Terry gets shot six times. Terry falls back, pulls his gun out, opens fires, kills the guy that shot him, Shoots the guy that, you know, he initially punched and knocked off the bike and shot a couple other people. Terry is sent away to prison. Life sentence. You know what I mean? Several people have been shot. One guy is dead. Just because people show up outside, it does not give you the right to go out there and take the law into your own hands. That's how the people see it. It's how the judges see it. The courts see it. You could have called 911. This could have been avoided. But because you didn't. We have several people on life support. We have a man that's dead, another man that shot up. You're going to prison. So when I met Terry, Terry had been in prison a while. Now we got a dude named MJ. And we called him MJ because 
he was an older black dude. When I say older, not older, just older than what I was at the time. MJ was probably mid forties. Big dude. Terry was a big dude. We called him MJ because we didn't know his name. When they call your name for male, like with me, they would say J Williams. If your name was, you know, um, Michael Jordan, they would say M Jordan. So all we knew about, you know, MJ was his first initial was M. His last name was Jones. So people either called him Mr. Jones or MJ. He was in there on the body as well. I don't know a lot about why he caught a body. I know he was a big dude. I know Terry was a big dude. Both of them had rank. Terry had a bunch of the white dudes under him. And I don't mean under him in a racist way, but dudes gravitated towards Terry because Terry's like a natural born leader. Terry's a dude that'll talk you out of the dumb shit. Terry's also a dude that will back down from nothing. You got Mr. Jones, AKA MJ, that sleeps three cells down from Terry. That is also a dude that, you know, you can tell he's been down a long time. He's a smart guy, but he doesn't put up with no shit. He done beat up a couple of his cellies, kicked him out the cell. And his years in the penitentiary, his name became known. He done put hands on people because he's not with that dumb shit. I've always told y'all it always goes bad. No matter who you are, where you're doing time at, what's going on, you're going to run into something that's going to go bad. They're running a poker game out at the table one night, and Terry's at the game playing poker. He wasn't running the game, but he's playing. And you got a younger dude, man, younger black dude. I don't remember the dude's name because he was a nobody who's out there betting. And the thing with poker is the only way you can usually run up a credit or owe until store day is if you're a regular poker player. That way people know, oh, he ain't going to buck. He's going to pay it. You know, if he says he's got it in the cell, he's got it in the cell. I've played with him before. He's good to go. We've got this younger black dude sitting out in the pod, and he's playing poker with everybody, and it's like four guys playing poker, and he's telling them, just keep the game going, keep the game going. I got it in the cell. I got it in the cell. Usually you have to bring your money right then and there, or y'all have an agreement that you're going till store day, or you can owe, whatever the case may be. But he's telling everybody, man, fuck it, cash me in. Give me some more chips. I got it in the cell. Ain't no big deal. He's done lost what he brought to the table, and now he's ass betting. He's selling wolf tickets. He's straight fronting on the fact that he's got anything in his cell. The game ends. It's time for lockdown. Terry takes a bunch of money from a bunch of dudes, tells dude, hey, go grab my shit, man. Dude said, look, I'm going to have to catch you on store day. It's not how it works. You will not be catching me on store day. You said you got it. Go get my shit. If you don't got it, you lied to me. You just sat here and played me. You was playing with money you didn't have. If I owe you, I'm going to pay you. You never had the money, so you was wishing on a star that you might, you know what I mean, come up off this game, take our money, when you never even had the money to really play to begin with. Dude said, look, I'm going to holler some my homeboys and them tomorrow and get you the money, Terry. said, no, nah, you can get me the money tonight before we lock down. And if you don't get me the money, I'm going to beat your ass. That's straight what it is. I'm not waiting on my money like you've been, you know, your ass betting, you're selling wolf tickets. Go get my money, man. I'm not playing with you. He goes to different store box guys, and everybody turns this young dude down. Nah, man. You shouldn't have been out there betting with money you ain't have. You're not going to pay the next man and owe me. I've told y'all these are the politics. Terry ends up smashing this dude. Terry, you know, tells him, come up to my cell and talk to me. But he does it nonchalantly to where it seems like he's like, look, man, I'll work with you. Just come up here and holler at me. Dude goes up to Terry's cell. Terry reaches out, grabs him, and Terry's, you know, the definition. You ever seen Opie? From Sons of Anarchy. Remember how big Opie was? Opie and Terry, that's how I could describe Terry. Terry looked a lot like Opie. Was a big dude like Opie. Dude comes to sit on Terry's like, so um, what are we going to do to resolve it, man? When are you going to pay me? And he's already planned on fucking this dude up because this dude lied to get into the poker table. Never had the money to play with. Terry grabs him up, snatches him, throws him across the cell, and beats his ass as he should. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's trying to steal from the poker game. You need your ass whooped. Got to set an example so other people don't try doing this. Terry just trashes this dude. Beats him up. Sits down on him. And it's like it's like a grown man versus, you know, a teddy bear. Teddy bear's not going to do nothing. You just sit down on the big teddy bear and just pound it. Terry didn't do him dirty. Terry didn't just completely crush him. Terry just beat him up enough that he knew he wasn't playing. And he said, come store day. Bring me my money. 
Now, y'all probably wondering, like, where does this dude MJ come in? You know what I mean? Where's Mr. Jones fall in place? We still have at Greensville, we would go every two weeks, and sometimes it would skip, and it would be three weeks before we would go to commissary. We're a couple days shy of going to commissary. It's been almost over a week now since Terry beat this young boy. And we come back from chow, and Mr. Jones comes out his cell and says, who took my TV? Who the fuck has been in my cell? Who stole my shit? You a pussy. When I find out who you are, I don't care who you are. Mind you now, Mr. Jones didn't, he had had his problems in prison because he's been there a long time. People had problems. But, you know, MJ didn't bother nobody. He stayed to himself. He worked his job in Enterprise every day. He came back, made his meals, went in his cell, watched his TV, went to sleep, took a shower. Same routine every day. This dude, you know, was more savage in his younger days. Now he's unfallen back, but he's still a savage. Comes out snapping. I'm going to find out who took my shit. I swear to God, I'll kill one of y'all. I'll put a knife through the side of your head. I will stab you to death. I'll pull your arm. I will beat you. To... Where, who the fuck took my TV? He did this, and there's a guard standing in the front of the pod listening to everything. The guard goes to the sergeants and says, run the cameras back. Well, the way their cells are positioned, the camera aims towards the middle. Terry, MJ, and them, they're on the top tier, cell 43 and 41. The camera does not catch their cell. My cell is below theirs. It does not catch their cell. My cell, none of that. I'm in cell 21, 20 at the time, back in the back corner. Actually, I was in 20, 21's next to me. On the top tier, the last two cells are, you know, 41, 42, and 43. It doesn't see anything. Doesn't see anybody go over there, take a TV. Nobody walks across the pod with a TV. So they're thinking, all right, whoever took the TV, nobody, we didn't see anybody leave with a TV. It's got to be in that vicinity. They lock us down. Start, we've been locked down now, you know, most of the evening. They come through two officers at a time. They're going in sales. They're checking property. Our TVs have our state, our, our actual name, our first initial and our last name engraved into the plastic on the back. And then it's got your inmate number engraved underneath of it. That way, they know that's your TV. They're, they're tearing the pot apart. They're going cell to cell. They're going to check the trash cans, the mop closet. They get to Terry's cell, and they go up underneath Terry's bunk. And there's MJ's TV. They come out the cell with the TV, and they set it against the rail. People are going, oh, shit. Like, they're thinking... No, Terry took two dudes TV. His celly didn't do it. His celly was old, like like really, really old. Like he was an old man, like dialysis, diabetic, 80 some year old man. Everybody knew there was no possibility that this old man went and took his TV. And not to mention the TV was found hidden back underneath Terry's bunk. Like you could pull your blanket down to cover the two boxes that are welded to the bottom where your commissary and clothes go and you can slide stuff back there. They come out. Hey, we found the TV. You know, they continue shaking down, shake down the last two or three cells. By now, MJ's down there at the door with the mirror out the door looking down the tear and sees the TV come out of Terry's cell. Terry's and I ain't take that motherfucking TV. What the fuck I want somebody to? I got my own TV, blah, blah, blah. They put Terry in handcuffs, take Terry up out of there, and just like that, Terry goes to the hole for stealing. I knew that if Terry comes back out on the yard, the fight between him and MJ is going to be a bad fight. They're both big men. They're both known for taking things to the extreme. They're both laid back. But like I've told you before, we all have that animalistic side inside of us. We all have that beast deep down inside of us that some of us don't know how to release. And some of us just try our hardest to keep inside. That was Terry. That was MJ. They had that beast. That beast had been let free. And when it gets free, it eats, it hurts people, it cuts people, it stabs people, it breaks people. They had that beast. And rather than struggling on trying to figure out how to let it out, they struggled to keep that beast in. Terry would go to the hole. He wouldn't be gone long. I think he was gone like 20 days. And he comes back. He tells them, I ain't doing anything wrong. I know y'all not going to put me back in the same cell, but I got a job. Y'all can put me back in the same pod at least like. I didn't steal nobody's TV. They believe him. You know what I mean? Like, they look at it. He's got money coming in. He's got no type of conduct on his record in prison for stealing. So they put Terry in a different cell in our pod. 
The day Terry walked back in, so many dudes were happy, walking up, what's up, trying to help him with his bags. What's up, you ain't, you know what I mean? Just shooting the basic shit of when somebody comes back from the hole. Meanwhile, Mr. Jones, MJ, he's over at Enterprise working in the warehouse. He comes back that evening, and word has already made it back to him that Terry stole his TV. You know what I mean? Word has already made it back to him. That, I mean, he's seen that whole thing. Word has made it back to him that Terry's now back in the pod. Terry comes out after he puts his stuff up, makes a cup of coffee, goes to some different cells, dapping up his homeboys, talking. Meanwhile, MJ's still at work. MJ comes back, and when he comes through the door, it's like you could cut the tension in the air with a knife. You could feel it. You knew it was going down. You knew it was going to be bad. Terry done stole this man's TV for whatever reason, and MJ wants some wreck. MJ goes up to his cell. Go ahead and take you know, his stuff off. It's, we wear these burgundies if you work in Enterprise. It's like burgundy scrubs almost, like a hospital nurse would wear. That's what the guys who worked in the, in the warehouse wore. He comes back, he takes his burgundies off, changes into a pair of blue jeans, puts on his state boots, puts on a white tee, and straight down the staircase he goes. He goes to Terry's cell, which is in view of the camera now, and the guards can see. And... He says, the door is closed, so he's talking to him through, through the door, and we can all hear him. He's telling him, open the door. And Terry's not copping deuces. Terry's just telling him, look, I didn't take your TV. We've both been down a long time. I know who you are. You know who I am. I didn't take your TV. How the fuck my TV get underneath your bed? You went in my cell. You took my TV. Listen, brother, I didn't take your TV. Somebody else must have put it there. Why the fuck would somebody else want to put my TV in your cell? That shit don't even make sense. Somebody else stole my TV. Open the door. Terry said, all right. Terry hopped up, hit the button, in goes MJ. And there's a difference between watching two regular dudes fight and two really big dudes fight. Like, when you watch a heavyweight, you know, boxing match, it's not a whole lot of boom, 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 trading punches because those punches hurt really bad. These two men go at it. And it's a small, confined space. To have both of them at the same time in that cell is really crowded already so they're kind of like chest to chest on each other just throwing punches and trying to hold each other pushing each other they're going at it and when every time they're hitting it's like i mean it's almost like somebody's banging the walls with like a sledgehammer boom 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 they're hitting scuffling they're hitting the countertop they knock the tv off, you know and terry sell off the countertop everything on that's cleared and they are rumbling they come out the cell rumbling and they're kind of pacing in circles because these big motherfuckers, are, they're trading blows. Them shit's hurt. You know what I mean? They're out in the middle of the pot now. The guard in the control booth is banging on the window. Stop, stop. And they're steadily squared up going at it. Do, 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 do. Trade punches, trade punches. Next thing you know, you hear the door slide. All these officers come running in. They got the canisters of mace. Ready to spray them down. Everybody else, we done locked down by now. They're screaming, lock down, lock down, lock down. We all go to our cells and lock down, so we're staying door watching, and they're both, you know, squared up in the pod still. Just, I mean, it's like watching a heavyweight fight, trading punches. Both of them are leaking. Both of them are knotted up. Terry's not backing down. MJ's not backing down. The only thing that can stop this is the guards, right? The guards come in, administer the spray on them, spray both of them. Psst, they're still trying to fight. Now, at this point, you can't see. Your nose is running. The shit's running down the back of your throat. Your eyes are burnt. You know what I mean? Like snot running out your nose from where you're sneezing, trying to reject it. We done wrapped our faces up in the cell with, with the wet t-shirts, standing there watching through the door so we can still see what's going on, right? They get Terry down, they get MJ down, they cuff him. Take him up out of there. Police go to the cells, pack all their belongings up, put them in trash bags, just like that. Terry and MJ are gone. The young dude that was at the poker table, stole MJ's TV and hit it in Terry's cell so that he could eliminate Terry and the daddy owed. Whole bunch of dudes in the pod, white and black, ended up fucking the young boy up. Young boy bragged to a couple different people on what they had done, what he had done. Stole Mr. Jones' TV. Dudes wasn't feeling that. Whole bunch of dudes just beat the shit out this young dude. White dudes, black dudes, like... They pretty much went to the cell and just banked him. You know what I mean? After he was beat up laying on the ground, other dudes would go up in the cell and just kick him, punch him. You got to remember, we was on lock because of this. 
a lot of dudes messed with, you know, Terry and, you know, Mr. Jones. Like, it, it was fucked up that both these guys was the whole, and you're a thief. So, yeah, that's how it went down. Somebody couldn't pay their debt. Eliminated the man they owed the debt by doing some sneaky shit. Crazy, crazy things, man. I try to tell y'all, you can go to prison, think you're going to slide underneath the radar. A lot of the times, the trouble that comes your way isn't even your trouble. You just find yourself in these situations, and you have to deal with them when they come. Keep yourself free. Stay out of there. Relive what I've seen, what goes on every day, and what I know to be true through my stories. Don't live it through your eyes. Don't live it through personal experiences. Let me do this in hopes of keeping you from having to do that. But y'all know, man, these institutions, these jails, prisons, penitentiaries, they're just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? This is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute.